Do you want to put together your very own gaming PC, but you're a little bit worried because you've never done it before? Then congratulations, you're in the right place, because let me assure you, it is actually dead easy, and we're going to do it in this video. We're gonna go through everything step by step, in I think the most amount of detail I can possibly do to make sure you know exactly what it is that you're doing, and by the end of it, you'll be ready to make your very own gaming PC. In order to actually build a gaming PC, you will of course need quite a few different parts on hand. You're going to need to have a chassis to actually put everything inside. Be Quiet, who gladly sponsored this video, actually supplied this 500DX for this build, and this is a great all-rounder because it's not too expensive, but it's definitely not a real budget case either. It comes with three fans as standard, you've got RGB and mesh on the front, and it actually shows off all of your different hardware with this tempered glass on the side, which is excellent. But you are going to need to have a motherboard and a CPU, and this is going to be your main starting point really for deciding not only what your PC is going to be capable of doing, but sort of dictating exactly how expensive it's going to be. This is a board from Biostar. It is a Z490 motherboard, which means that it is compatible with Intel's latest, I can't say latest, what's going on with me today? Intel's latest. 10th generation processors. This is the 10600K. This is a six core processor and it is pretty much one of, if not the best option for a gaming PC when it comes to price to performance because you're able to truly unlock the full potential of your graphics card, but you're not paying any more money for cores or extra performance in workload applications that don't matter to gaming at all. Which does lead us on to the graphics card. Here we also have a brilliant mid-range option. This is a RTX 2060. This is actually made by NVIDIA and this is one of NVIDIA's own cards. It has their own cooler on it as well. And this is a great little card for 1080p, 1440p gaming. And because it is an RTX graphics card, you can turn on things like ray tracing and DLSS in games as well, if you're after some sort of fancy effects. These are the components that I would describe as your primaries. So the case, everything that is gonna go inside that, the way that your PC will actually look the platform with the motherboard and CPU, and then actually that graphics card that is going to dictate your FPS. And most of your money really should be going into the graphics card as that's going to have the biggest amount of impact on your actual gaming performance. In terms of RAM these days, if you can, grab 16 gigabytes. This is a set of 3600 megahertz RAM. This is RGB though, so, you know, go faster stripes. But of course, don't forget that all of these components do require some electricity to actually function. And this is where your power supply comes in. So this hooks up to the mains and then sends all of the different components, all of the juice that they do need to run. But not all power supplies are made equally. This one, for instance, is what we call a modular power supply. So all of the cables do actually come separately, which means you don't need to plug in any cables that you're not going to use, which means that your whole build becomes a lot cleaner and it means you can swap it out for some fancier cables later down the line if you want. But the main thing really you'd need to be thinking about is getting something that is very well made, reliable, going to last, sounds quiet, be quiet, but then also that it has enough wattage to actually supply all of the components with the right amount of power. You can't go too high, but this will cost you more money, but if you don't have enough, you'll experience things like shutdowns, crashes, and that won't be a very pleasant experience at all. This is a 650 watt unit, which is perfect for most PC builds, and I think unless you're spending thousands of pounds on a PC, this is probably all you're going to need. In terms of where you're actually going to be putting these games though, you're going to need to get yourself a hard drive, or a solid state drive. So you can grab a traditional spinning hard drive. This is two terabytes in size and they're a lot cheaper than SSDs. These are great for filling up with very large games, maybe things like Call of Duty, Modern Warfare and things. Very big, require a lot of storage. But these days, most people just go for just flash solid state storage and you have two options. You have this, which I can tell just from the weight is the NVMe SSD. So these things are very small. This is from Crucial, it's called the P5. I would wager though that most people are probably just gonna go for a single SATA drive. So these ones are a little bit bigger and unlike the NVMe drives, they don't go on your motherboard. These go in your case somewhere and then plug in with cables. And these strike the right balance really between capacity, so being able to store a lot of things on it. Who's getting arrested today? That's a fire engine probably, isn't it? No, it's an ambulance. I'm not very good at this game. No, SATA SSDs are perfect for striking the right balance between capacity and speed. And because they're a lot cheaper than NVMe drives, 
they make a lot more sense for gaming computers because you get more bang for your buck essentially. But you will also need a USB stick that has Windows preloaded on it. This is very easy, just log into a Windows PC, insert a stick, wipe it, and then the Windows tool that you can download from the Windows website will actually then load this up with a copy of Windows. Just make sure you do get yourself a license key or you have one of those horrible activate Windows stickers that will never go away. Now at this stage, you may have realized that we haven't actually discussed cooling yet because you're going to need a CPU cooler to actually enable the very small chip on your motherboard to stay cool and not cook itself basically. But most of them that you can buy today will come with something that looks a little bit like this. You can see they're quite small, but they're somewhat effective. The problem with them is you're not really going to be able to overclock your processor and they tend to be a fair bit louder than third party solutions, which is why if budget permits, or of course you have to buy one because your Intel CPU doesn't come with one, you're going to need to get something from a third party. And you're typically looking at something like this. It is a Shadow Rock TF2. It is a Be Quiet air cooler. And this will be a lot higher performance. You can see it's rated for 160 watts TDP. Or you can grab yourself an all-in-one liquid cooler. This uses a radiator and then water and a pump that's actually on a pump head that sits on top of your CPU. And this then creates like a little loop as the name Silent Loop would suggest, whereby the heat actually goes up to the radiator and then the fans blow that out of the case. Now, interestingly, what I think a lot of people don't realize is that when you do build a PC, you don't actually need to use your case straight away because you want to build on top of the motherboard first. You have a few different components that actually seat directly into this. So it makes sense to do this on the motherboard box as it is non-conductive and you have so much more light in here and you don't have to sort of be reaching in and making life more difficult for yourself. So simply grab your motherboard box and then you'll find your fairly delicate, but at the same time unlikely to break unless you're throwing it around motherboards. You can have a good look at this. As, as I say, this is the heart of your computer. This is the racing one from Biostar and it looks really neat and tidy actually. And you have this little back plate pre-applied to it, which is cool. But just grab that, place it aside for a second. And then if you're using a SATA SSD or a hard drive of any description, you're going to need to go into your box and then take out some of these SATA cables as these are what is actually going to allow you to communicate from the hard drive or the SSD to the motherboard. Then grab yourself an array of screwdrivers. You're looking for a Phillips crosshead screwdriver and ideally a magnetic one. But if you have one with a ratchet, that also works quite nicely as well. Switching to Marcus Cam, patent pending, we can see this is what the motherboard looks like up close. So this is where our CPU is going to go in this little socket here. These are what we call the RAM slots. You can see we have four on this Z490 board, so you can put up to four different sticks of RAM in here. And we're going to want to install them in a set order, which is this slot here first, so we can open this little notch to remind us, and then the one at the end. We've got NVMe SSD slots underneath here. These are our SATA ports, so this is where we're gonna plug in any hard drives we have. These are the PCIe slots, so where we're actually gonna place our graphics card down into these. But if you do have like a streaming capture card or something, you'll use these as well. Down the bottom, we've got a load of tiny things. These are very important. These are your fan headers. So you plug your case fans and any cooling really, they go in here. Our HD audio, as it's called, is this little thing here, and that's just the front panel audio, so when you plug in your headphones, it actually works. It goes straight to the motherboard. We've got USB here for all of the USB devices either connected inside our PC or on the front panel. We plug all of our different case buttons, so things like the button to actually turn it on or the reset switch. All of these things connect down here and just look in your motherboard manual and it will tell you which each one does. We've got USB 3 as well, which looks slightly different. We do have all of these power connections. We've got this very big one here. It's called the ATX power and you can't miss it because it's huge. And then you do also have some CPU ones at the top as well. The CPU ones, you only need to use the one on the left. Normally you don't need to connect both of them. That's just if you're gonna do some extreme overclocking. So I hope you enjoyed Marcus Cam. That was a little clever idea, wasn't it? But to actually get started on your build, it's incredibly simple. Simply grab your processor out of the box, pick up this little lever and then lift it up. And there is a little gold arrow, so line that up with the arrow that's on the motherboard and then gently drop your CPU down into place. Then it's time to grab your RAM out of the box and the slots that we've opened up earlier. You just need to find the little notch in the base, line it up with the notch that you actually have on your RAM stick itself, but they just drop in real nice and easy. They make an audible click 
and there you have your CPU and RAM combo. If you're using an NVMe SSD, then this is when you're going to need to grab that smaller screwdriver and your NVMe drive from your stack. It is generally good practice to use the top slot as you're less likely to run into any issues. There is actually some like thermal pads that are on the bottom of this heatsink and you need to take this little bit of plastic off or it's not gonna do anything. Grab your little SSD, insert it, no force required, and then screw it back down. This is our CPU cooler then. You can see it's big, but not too big. But this is pretty simple to install. You're just going to need your mounting hardware that comes in the box. You have a back plate, so lift up your motherboard, find those big holes that you really can't miss, and then line this up with the back plate. This motherboard then has these tiny little C-clips that go onto those posts that you've just poked through. Then just grab your little mounting brackets and attach the screws through, ready to go on. Then grab these brackets, place them on top of the cooler and screw them in, the four screws provided. Then it should just be a case of dropping this down on top of the motherboard. We're gonna do a little test fit to make sure everything's in place, which it looks like it is. But you are going to need to put some thermal paste on top of your CPU. Your cooler may have some pre-applied, but otherwise you just need to grab a very small amount from a tube and then just dot this on top of your CPU. This bit could be a little bit fiddly as we then place the cooler on top of the motherboard and then we have to very carefully lift it up and screw from the other side. Try to tighten everything up in a cross pattern as this reduces any stress on the CPU socket itself. Diving back into Marcus Cam, you're going to need to grab your little fan cable that we found earlier, and where it says here CPU, simply plug that in. If you have two different fans on your CPU cooler, then one goes in CPU fan, the other one goes in CPU optional. This is the really exciting bit then, when you can actually start to see your build come alive and grab the case. Taking the side panel off, just unscrew the tempered glass, and then do the same with the rear. We have these things called standoffs here that your motherboard will sit on. They're pre-applied for large full-size ATX motherboards, but if you're using micro ATX or mini ITX, you're gonna to have to move some of these around. Round the back of the case, this is where you're going to have to do all of that cable management and things, but everything comes pre-done for you as much as it can do. You've got these little cables here. These are things like HD audio, so this connects to the bottom of the motherboard. We've got USB Type-C as well, which is a brand new connector. We've got that big USB 3 that we talked about earlier. We've got those little case connections that go down the bottom. Again, check your motherboard manual to know where these go. We've got an RGB header and then we have some fan headers. Step one then is to get your case and lay it down flat. Grab your motherboard and then just gently, or at least as gently as you possibly can, lower this into place. As predicted, we do have a little bit of a clearance issue in that the motherboard doesn't actually fit in with this rear fan in its current location. So what you would do is unplug this fan and place it somewhere else. The way you do this is to remove the dust filter on the top. And then you see that there are some pre-done holes at the top. And you've got two different channels. You've got one that are for the smaller 120 millimeter fans, or ones like this that are 140 for the larger fans. So we're gonna put it here. And I'm matching the orientation, so the label is facing upwards so that the air is blown out of the case. But you could do it the other way if you wanted to. Is at this point, you probably realize you don't have enough hands and you start looking like a bit of an idiot but then again I was told that when I was I don't know about 10 in school so I'm quite used to it all oh, that got deep didn't it brilliant so that's that fan moved and we can now try and insert our motherboard once again once you've clicked it into place you then need to grab the screws that come with your case and then actually start screwing the motherboard down so that it is nice and secure within your enclosure and then you'll have something along the lines of this, which is pretty quirky actually. You don't see many builds these days that have top flow coolers, especially ones that remove the rear fan and have it like this. But you know what? I really like how it's different. I think that's pretty cool. This is when you need to grab those SATA cables that we mentioned that you take from the motherboard box. They have these little catches on them and these just go in these little sockets here. Turn your attention around the back 
And this is where it doesn't get complicated, but it gets a bit monotonous. So we need to start plugging in all of these cables. But I do like to put the drives in first. Our hard drive, if you're using one of those, requires a hard drive cage. And the system in this Be Quiet case is brilliant, as you just take the whole cage out, grab your hard drive, make sure the connectors are facing you, and then you just slide it into the cage. Grab the screws, once again from your case accessories box, and then just get this in there nice and tight. Our even faster solid state drive though has its own unique place in these bays at the back. So once again, you take the whole bay out and then you screw this down and then put the whole thing back in. Then you can start plugging them in. So grab that SATA data cable that you got earlier. But do remember you need to power them or they're not gonna do anything. While we're at the back here though, it's time to grab the rest of the cables and start plugging them in. So we're gonna do the fans first. We have two at the top and one at the front. So we should have a total of three fan cables. So you just need to find three fan headers on your motherboard, plot these into place. So now we can come around to the other side and here I've got all the fan headers and HD audio and we're gonna plug these in, which is very fiddly. Then do the same with the USB 3.0, noting that the USB-C that we have on this particular case isn't compatible with this motherboard. So you'd need to get a converter for that to work. And then last, but certainly not least, is those power connections for the actual case itself. So the main one being the power switch. Sometimes it's reset, sometimes it's LEDs and things. Again, consult your motherboard manual to know exactly where you need to go, but they just slot straight into place. At this stage, we are actually almost there, believe it or not. There's just two components left to go. It doesn't really matter which order you do it in, but I think putting the power supply in last makes more sense. So we're gonna put our graphics card in now. We're going to need a screwdriver and we're going to need to remove these PCIe covers, these little like mesh things that you see at the back. Then line your graphics card up with the slot that you're going to use. Then with your screwdriver, screw those thumb screws back down into place to keep everything nice and safe and secure. Connecting our power supply is incredibly simple in this case, as you get a little bracket on the bottom in this very big hole, and you grab your little bracket, place it on top of your power supply with the fan facing downwards, and then you screw this in together, and then you screw the whole like bracket power supply combination into the case. Don't forget to actually plug in those power connections before you put this in your case, as it is a lot easier to do this now than later. You should push them in as far as they will go until you hear an audible click. Make sure that you feed all of those cables that you've now connected through into the PC chamber and push the whole unit into the case. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy and then feed all of these big cables into their respective positions. So the graphics card is gonna go through the chamber and up. The big fat one is gonna come through at the top. The CPU cable is gonna go all the way through the top. This is our graphics card, our ginormous ATX, and then the CPU is all the way up here at the top, which leaves us with the very last task of plugging in our SATA power to those drives. So here we have an SSD. The shapes are exactly the same as the SATA data, but slightly longer. And then we need to plug in our hard drive. It's now time to get this thing plugged in, make sure everything works. Before you do this, it is worth actually having a quick run to make sure everything is plugged in. So anything that's slightly loose should be pushed in a little bit further if possible. Uh, you need to have your CPU, your ATX, your graphics card. And when you do plug your computer in, make sure you use the graphics cards ports rather than the ones on the motherboard. I know it's tempting when you've got HDMI on your motherboard, but that's not gonna do anything. You wanna output from your graphics card. Ah, so this is the nervous bit then, and I assure you the first time you put together your computer, this is the bit you'll be dreading. But the adrenaline levels, especially when you turn it on and it does work, is so worth it. Make sure you grab your USB drive. You can plug this in at the front. If you have Windows, it should actually start loading into this automatically. It might go into the BIOS, it depends, I guess, on your exact motherboard. The only thing I've done so far is actually plug it in at the back and the RGB memory has already gone a bit ballistic. Because <laughs> it's crucial ballistics. But I also remembered I did not plug in my RGB strip that we mentioned. So this plugs into the RGB header on the motherboard. 
and because they're magnetic you can put them wherever you like. So let's give this a go. We press the on button and it did something. It usually does this like power cycle and it goes through a few times before you actually get an output. This is usually a good sign. It's not always but so far so good and then we should start to see something on the display once it's done its initial boot sequence. And then this is the bit in the video where I just keep talking and talking to try and distract uh, from the fact that I am nervous as to whether my PC that I've spent ages is going to work or not. That if things don't go to plan, there's usually an error code down at the bottom that will tell you what's going on and what the problem might be. Is our monitor on? Is our monitor on? That could be... Oh, it's not, is it? Every single time. Why can I not do a simple task? A-O, which usually means all okay, and here we go. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, you have successfully put together your own gaming PC. And I think this actually looks really cool. I love how it's very unique and the Be Quiet style is usually a little bit understated. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. It helps out so, so much you really wouldn't believe. If you want to see another video as to what to do next, what should you put on your gaming PC, what applications, how do you get games running? I don't know, all of these things, a bit of tuning. I think I'm actually gonna take this PC to the next level, shall we say, in that video. So stay tuned for that, but thank you so much for watching. Get subscribed, check out all of the other builds on the channel. Those go through different benchmarks and things as well, if you wanna see uh, performance and all that good stuff. But I really appreciate your time. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.